Hey, Michael, good to see you. Uh, you said before that you think part of the reason Nicola wants to play every game is just, you know, being Serbian and that being part of his, his makeup, his background, his mentality. Do you think there is any portion of him that wants to play in every game to prove that he's a well-conditioned, good athlete and prove people wrong who, who are naysayers or, or doubt that he is as athletic as he is? Um, he's never conveyed that, you know, uh, for being a reason. Uh, I think he takes a tremendous amount of pride uh, in his work ethic, his conditioning, his ability to play uh, every game, especially when you consider uh, what we came out of in the bubble and all that was asked of him down there in Orlando. Um, but uh, I think by now, I mean, after six years, if people still have any questions about his durability, his toughness, the athleticism, the endurance, uh, I don't know what they're watching. I mean, it's just uh, the kid has proven time and time again that he's on a different level in so many ways. And what he's done this year uh, is just another example of that. I mean, for us to be 11 and four since Jamal Murray went down to uh, with the ACL injury, a lot of guys have played well. But Nicola, that's just another example of why he is the league MVP, in my opinion. Uh, the guy puts his team on his back. If you took the second best player, off of somebody else's team, would they be able to do the same thing? I don't know. Uh, but, you know, for, for Nicole, it's just more about pride. And if I'm not hurt where I can't play, why shouldn't I play? And, uh, you know, yeah, I think there's a lot of that you really have to respect because in today's day and age, a lot of guys run for the first opportunity where they don't have to compete and play and look for the easy way out. And Nicola never does that. Eddie Wingy. Coach, you had mentioned that, I mean, regardless of who plays for you tonight, getting guys minutes who maybe haven't seen as many minutes, they would be on the floor. What do you want to see from them when they do get out there and, and play for your team? I, I just want to see them play the right way. Uh, so what does that mean? Playing hard, that should be a given, but I want to see guys go out there and compete and play hard. It's not about making or missing a shot, Katie. It's about, are you trying to play the right way? Are you trying to uh, play with the identity that we've created for ourselves? Um, playing for your teammate, being selfless, competing, defending, all those types of things. And uh, when, when guys go out there and do that, they look like they belong. And sometimes when guys don't do that, well, then it's just a reminder of maybe why they haven't played a lot during the season. But um, these last three games, you'll see some different lineups and different combinations, try some things out, get creative. And... Um, and kind of see see where that leads us. Matt Moore. Michael, some housekeeping questions for you. I know that Monte's on just an injury management tonight. How did he respond uh, the day after um, to those minutes? And then are you able to tell us if you expect Will or PJ back before the playoffs start or will it be sometime after? Yeah, uh, regarding Monte, you know, he felt uh, pretty good. Obviously, he's only played, I think, 10 minutes, 18 seconds in his first game back. Uh, we wanted to limit him to first half minutes, which we did. Uh, he's feeling fine. Uh, we're going into a back-to-back, -back, as you all know. And uh, in my talk with Steve Short and the training staff, they did not want Monte playing in both games of the back-to-back. -back. Uh, so he'll be out tonight, have a chance to play tomorrow night in Detroit. Uh, I know he'll probably have tons of family and friends coming to the game, uh, so he'll have a chance to play in front of them, uh, which which I think is great. Uh, regarding Will, regarding PJ, uh, both of them are progressing with their respective injuries. Uh, do I expect them back prior to the playoffs starting? Uh, probably not. Will is definitely closer than PJ Doche, I will say that. Uh, so we'll kind of see uh, each day where that goes. but. Uh, Will has a better chance of coming back sooner than P.J. Dozier does. Ryan Blackburn. Coach, I think tonight is the first game that, that Michael is going to miss uh, due to anything other than health and safety protocols this year. And that sort of it dates back to last year as well. I know Nicola gets a lot of credit for his durability, as do other guys on the roster. But what can you say about Michael's ability to just – kind of stay the process and, and his commitment to his physical and mental health? Yes, um, I think it's a great point. 
Uh, you know, we, uh, we do spend so much time talking about Nicola and all the great things Nicola has done. Uh, you know, but Michael deserves a lot of credit for his play this year, uh, elevating his play, especially when we needed him to. Uh, I mentioned the other day, if you look at Michael, pre-All-Star break and post-All-Star break numbers, uh, a huge increase. I think Michael Porter needs to be mentioned for the most improved player in the NBA. He's had that kind of a season for us. Um, and then just the availability to be to be able to play every night. You know, uh, Michael Porter not being able to play tonight is just, he's been playing 35 minutes a night for a long time now. We're asking a lot of him. And to be quite honest, after that game in Charlotte, uh, you could see the fatigue both mentally and physically uh, with Michael. So uh, I give him a tremendous amount of credit for stepping his game up for him constantly being available and answering the call. And obviously we're gonna need more of that as we move into the postseason. Leonardo Torres. Hey coach, it's Leonardo Torres from Peru. Hope you're well. Coach, in the same way, what are your thoughts on Michael Porter's offensive development? And if you think he's a top candidate to win the most improved player this season? Thank you. Yeah, oh, thank you for the question. Um, yeah, you know, we knew when we drafted Michael, you know, uh, years ago, you know, that it was well worth the risk where, where we took him. He had dropped in that draft because there were concerns about his uh, his health, his back. Uh, and we felt it was just too, too great of an opportunity to draft a player that has unlimited potential. And to this point, it's really paid off. Uh, Michael has continued to get better. He's grown his game. That's probably the thing I'm most proud about when you talk about Michael Porter. He came in as a, an elite scorer, great shooter, and I think he's really expanded his game. The defense, the rebounding, the durability, um, and to have two players right now with all the injuries, Nicola and Michael, that can be your go-to players that you run plays for, and you feel really good about that, is a testament to his, his ability. And I've said this quite a few times, Michael's only going to continue to get better, which is probably what excites me more than anything when you speak about him. Uh, regarding most improved player, I think a lot of people have already penciled in Julius Randle for that award. I understand that. Julius Randle has been phenomenal this year. Um, I just want to make sure that Michael Porter's name is a part of that discussion because when you look at last season to this season and all that's been asked of him and the efficiency in which he's done his job, I think he has to be under consideration. All right, Coach, we got time for one more. We're going to go back to Matt Moore. Michael, you've earned your stripes in this league, and your first stint in Sacramento was a tough one. Um, you're the Nuggets this season. You're probably going to finish with a better record than last year, and you likely last year would have finished with a better record than the year before had it not been for the bubble. The Nuggets have improved every year. You've made the playoffs. You went to the Western Conference Finals. You made the, the stump for Nicola for MVP and for MPJ for, you know, for most improved. Do you have any thoughts on if you feel like you should be in more talked about more for coach of the year? I know that you don't like to take credit for these things, but at some point you have to at least recognize and be proud of what you've accomplished in Denver, right? Oh, uh, tremendously proud. Uh, you know, uh, I'm not going to sit here and speak about myself, but uh, I'm extremely proud of what we have built, you know, since the day that Tim Conley and Josh Gronke hired me uh, six years ago. Uh, to see the team when I first inherited it, Matt, to where we are now, to see the improvements, the gains, and to do it the way we've done it. Uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Uh, I really am thankful that Vivek Ranadive gave me a chance in Sacramento to kind of show that I was capable of leading a team as a head coach. And that allowed me to get this second job in Denver. Um, listen, the Cola doesn't get respect. The Nuggets don't get respect. I don't get respect. It, who cares, man? All I care about is us staying together, us finding ways to win uh, and continuing to prove people wrong, which I think we've done a great job of. I don't know if there's been a more resilient team uh, in the last few years, not just from the bubble being down 3-1 to Utah, 3-1 to L.A., but even this year. I mean, think about that. We've done 11-4 and four since Jamal went down, which is tied for the best record in the NBA in the last 15 games. No Jamal Murray. No Monte Marks, no Will Barton, no P.J. Dozier. It's incredible what this team continues to do 
and we don't worry about the outside noise. It is what it is, Matt. Uh, I'm just proud to be working with uh, a great group of people that I truly enjoy coming to work with every single day. And I know for a fact, a lot of people can't say the same thing. All right, that'll do it. Thank you, Thank Coach. You. Appreciate it.